So, in this lecture, we will see design of bituminous payment with the wrap stabilized base and the payment cross section details for a long life payment. So, we will design a payment cross sections uh, with the wrap stabilized base and to take a traffic of 150 million standard axial. So, this is a typical cross section. The payment cross section may consist of 4 or 5 layers in which 1 or 2 layers can be a HMA layer and HMA layer resting on a wrap stabilized base. So, the wrap stabilized base course is considered here as a granular layers. So, you need to determine the resilient modulus of a wrap stabilized base uh, assuming it to be a granular layer and use that as an input here to determine to determine critical stresses and strain. So, we will use a cement treated base layer and again it is resting on a subgrade. So, we will assume a trial section and find out whether the assumed trial section can take 150 MSA traffic. So, let us assume a 5 layered structure with the 2 HMA layer BC and DBM of 40 and 80 millimeter thickness. We will use a modulus of BC and DBM layer to be 300 mega Pascal. So, now the base course is used here is a wrap stabilized base. So, we will assume a thickness of 200 millimeter with the modulus of 800 mega Pascal. This base is resting on a cement treated sub base with a modulus of 600 mega Pascal and with a thickness of 250 millimeter. So, we will use an effective modulus of a subgrade to be 70 mega Pascal. So, the Poisson's ratio value for a cement treated sub base alone is taken as 0.25 and all other layers it is taken as 0 0.35. So, now when you give this as an input in an IIT PAVE software, the screen looks something like this. So, we have though it is a 5 layer structures, we will club BC and DB as a single layer. So, you will have a total of 4 layers here. So, BC DBM club together will in have a thickness of 120 millimeter with a Poisson's ratio of 3000 mega Pascal. BC DBM club together will have a thickness of 120 millimeter with an elastic modulus of 3000 mega Pascal. The base course thickness what we assumed is 200 millimeter with an elastic modulus of 800 mega Pascal. Cement treated sub base is a thickness of 250 millimeter with an elastic modulus of 600 mega Pascal. So, we have assumed an elastic modulus of a subgrade to be 770 mega Pascal. Now, in this Poisson's ratio, cement treated sub base alone is taken as 0.25, other values are taken as 0.35 here. So, this structure is subjected to a standard axial load and with a V load of 20 kilo Newton and with a tire pressure of 0.56. So, we will determine stresses and strain at two interfaces. One is at the interface of a HMA layer and the base layer and second is at the interface of a sub base layer and the subgrade layer. So, the first interface is at the depth of 120 millimeter. So, and we need a stresses and strain at a radial distance of 0 and 155 millimeter. That is if you take a dual wheel load, one point is exactly at the center of one first one wheel and uh, 155 is exactly at the middle of two wheels. Now, uh, if now, the second interface is at the depth of 570 millimeter. So, we will measure the strain value at the radial distance of 0 and 155 millimeter. Now, this is the result you get it. Now, at the first interface that is 120 millimeter here, the critical strain that induces fatigue damage in HMA layer can be obtained from the maximum of this 4 value. So, you get the value to be 0.00009713 that is epsilon t and epsilon v is at the second interface and epsilon v is uh, found to be from the maximum of this value and we get it to be 0 0.0002206. Now, we will find out what is the number of repetitions corresponding to this epsilon t and epsilon v. So, we will use a 90 percent reliability equations for this and substitute an epsilon v and epsilon t in the 90 percent reliability equations corresponding to rutting and a fatigue damage and we will see what is the allowable number of repetitions of a standard axial load. So, when you substitute epsilon v here, the number of repetitions of a standard axial load before the subgrade can fail in rutting is comes out to be 532.7 MSA. For the strain corresponding to the fatigue damage, the number of repetitions of standard axial load n f comes out to be 529.1 MSA. So, we need a payment cross section to take a 
traffic of 150 MSA. Now, we see that the payment cross sections what we provided can take higher than 500 MSA. So, we can make it more economical by reducing the thickness of different layer. So, this is the thickness we uh, used it for determining the stresses and strain. Now, we will go for a next uh, trial sections by reducing the thickness of each layer and uh, we will try out with this cross section. We will take a BC layer which is of a minimum thickness of 40 millimeter, DBM layer of a reduced thickness from 80, we will reduce it to 60 millimeter, base course again is of a reduced thickness, we will reduce it to 185 millimeter, cement treated sub base also will go with a reduced uh, thickness of 200 millimeter and we will see what is the critical stresses and strain. So, this is the corresponding input for the new trial sections. So, you can see the thickness of all the layers are reduced since thickness are reduce the interface uh, thickness will also reduce here and when you compute the stresses and strain at different locations you see this results. So, at the first interface the strain value which is a maximum from this 4 value is computed to be 0 0.0001052. Now, epsilon v value which is computed from the maximum of this value was found to be 0 0.0002908. Now, for this corresponding strain we will again use a 90 percent reliability equations and get what is the number of repetitions of a standard axial load. So, you get for a rutting the number of repetitions was found to be 152.1 MSA and for fatigue damage it is found out to be 387.8 MSA. So, all these fatigue damage analysis or damage equations are computed for a volume of effective binder content to be 11.5 percent, this is an volume basis 11.5 percent and volume of air voids to be 3.5 percent. So, this is a mixture property that we assume for computation of uh, number of repetitions of standard axial load corresponding to fatigue damage. So, we see that the payment critical failure is in rutting and it, it is slightly higher than what it is expected that is 150 MSA here. So, we now we can say that the payment with this cross section takes the 150 MSA traffic here. Now, the next design is a long life payment. IRC defines a payment as a long life payment based on the critical strain at different locations. So, if the tensile strain at the bottom of a HMA layer is less than 80 micro strains and if the vertical compressive strain at the top of a subgrade layer is less than 200 micro strain, the payment is said to have a longer life without any distresses. So, there can be a different combinations of a layers with a different modulus and different thickness to exhibit a long life. One such cross section is given here. So, this is a conventional cross section of the payment with the two HMA layer and base and subgrade layer to be a granular layer resting on a subgrade layer. And the modulus property what we have is also a conventional material property with the to HMA layer to have a modulus of 3000 mega Pascal base and granular base course having a modulus of 192 mega Pascal. So, this modulus may vary based on an assumed thickness. So, for an assumed thickness you can compute the modulus here. Here base and sub base course are assumed as a one single layer and the modulus was computed here and this effective subgrade to have a modulus of 62 mega Pascal. So, for this material property let us assume a thickness of a BC and DBM layer, layer together to be 310 millimeter. So, this 310 millimeter again it is considered as a one single layer with a modulus of 3000 mega Pascal. Now, base and sub base thickness we will assume it to be 250 millimeter and 200 millimeter. Now, we will see what is the critical stresses and strain for this assumed section. So, it is assumed as a three layered sections with the elastic modulus of each layer HMA layer to be 3000 mega Pascal, base layer or granular base layer to be 194 and effective modulus modulus of a subgrade to be 62. So, the Poisson's ratio for all these layer is 0.35 and we have a thickness of a base BC and DBM together as a 310 millimeter and the base and sub base combined together as a 450 millimeter. So, we will subject this payment to a 20 kilo Newton wheel load with a tire pressure of 0.56 and we will see what are the critical stresses at the 
interfaces. So, the first interface is at a, a depth of 310 millimeter. So, we will find out the stress value at the two locations, uh, one is at the 0 radial distance, another is at a 155 millimeter radial distance. So, the second interface that is just above the subgrade layer is 760 millimeter from the top. So, now when you see the critical stresses and strain value, the epsilon t what you get is uh, maximum from this 4 value here and we find it to be less than 80 micro strain here. Likewise, epsilon uh, v value above the subgrade layer was found to be maximum that is 152 micro strain which is less than 200 micro strain. So, the strain values here are less than the uh, value of 80 and 200 micro strains. So, we say that the payment cross section is what we assume to have a longer life with no distresses. The, now, the second cross sections which we will check is the most cross section with a high modulus value. So, we will have a BC and DBM layer that is a hot mix asphalt layer with a higher modulus. So, you can have a high modulus value by using a high modulus bitumen here. So, let us use the modulus value here to be 5500 mega Pascal here. The base course is resting on a cement treated sub base. So, when the granular layer is resting on a cement treated sub base, the modulus of a crushed aggregate above the cement treated sub base can be considered as 350 mega Pascal. So, if you use a cement treated sub base, the modulus value here is considered as 600 mega Pascal and subgrade has a modulus of 62 mega Pascal here. Now, except cement treated base, all other layer has a Poisson's ratio of 0.35 and cement treated base has a Poisson's ratio of 0.25. Now, we will reduce the thickness from as that considered from the previous case because we are in we are providing a high modulus material here. So, let us use a BC and DBM combined thickness to be 190 millimeter in a previous case it is 310 millimeter. We will use a base layer of 200 millimeter and cement treated sub base layer of uh, 250 millimeter. So, this is typically a 5 layered structures. Now, for an analysis we combine BC and DBM together and we will analyze this as a 4 layered structure. Before we see the analysis result, we will recollect the material properties recommended by a standard here. So, this is the table which you already seen here. The first two row corresponds to a bituminous material. The bituminous layer with VG40 bitumen or a modified bitumen will have a modulus value of 3000 mega Pascal or lab tested value whichever is a lower value is considered here. Now, the bituminous layer with VG30 material has a modulus of 2000 mega Pascal or lab tested value again whichever is a lower value is considered here. So, we need a lab testing here to compute the resilient modulus value and a standard recommends to follow an ASTM procedure to determine the resilient modulus of bituminous mixture. So, if you do not follow an ASTM procedure for computing a resilient modulus value, you can also use a resilient modulus relation here to compute a resilient modulus from an ITS value. So, you have two different modulus for a different uh, sample size we use and for a different binder we use here. So, you can compute the resilient modulus and use it here. Now, you can see that modulus values are in the range of 2000 to 3000 mega Pascal. Uh, this is a conventional modulus value which we use. So, now in this particular cross section, we are going to consider a high modulus HMA layer with a modulus of 5500 mega Pascal. Again, we are using a granular layer above a cement treated sub base. So, when you use a granular layer above a cement treated sub base, you can consider the modulus to be 300 for a natural gravel or 350 for a crushed aggregate. We will use a modulus of 350 mega Pascal for the design purpose. So, we consider it to be a four layered structure with one layer as a HMA layer of modulus 550 and thickness is 190 millimeter. Now, granular layers of base course 350 mega Pascal with a thickness of 200 and a sub base layer is a cement treated layer with a modulus of 600 mega Pascal with a Poisson's ratio of 0.25 and the thickness of 250 millimeter. So, this rest on a subgrade that is having an effective subgrade modulus of 62 mega Pascal. Now, if you do this analysis and compute the critical stresses and strain at the interfaces, you can see that the tensile strain that induces 
fatigue damage in a HMA layer to be less than 80 micro strains, vertical compressive strain that induces rutting on the subgrade to be less than 200 micro strain. So, since the strains are within the specified limit for a long life payment, you can call this payment cross section to be a long life payment cross section. This is the three different payment cross sections that we worked out today, one corresponding to 150 MSA traffic and other two corresponds to long life payment cross section. So, you can see that the modulus value plays a critical role in the design. So, it is necessary that the modulus value during construction here is to be met when you do a design. So, IRC suggests a few quality control measures for this. So, by you need to collect the sample during construction and test the modulus value to ensure that the model is what is transferred to the field is meeting out the design modulus here. So, the for a bituminous concrete material, so you collect the specimen that is 3 specimen for each 400 tons of a mix that we use and test the resilient modulus value from the indirect tensile uh, strength test and check whether the field mix is meeting out the design resilient modulus value. In case if you use a cement treated material or any stabilized base course and sub base course, so we need to find out what is an unconfined compressive strength test and check whether this meets the design requirement. So, you have a different test here recommended as a quality control measures to check with what we have a design requirement. So, now let us summarize what we have seen with an IRC payment design here. So, we have seen different design steps involved in the design of payment and we have seen different inputs that goes as a payment design and we, ha we have seen different distress transfer functions that includes distress transfer function corresponding to fatigue damage, rutting and the cement treated base distress. So, we have seen a demo on an IIT PAPE software and we solved a design example for a payment cross section with a granular base and sub base course. We have seen a cross section with a cement treated base and cement treated sub base course and we have also solved a payment cross section with a wrap stabilized base binder for 150 MSA traffic and we have seen a long life payment cross sections. This is the summary of the design step. So, first with the traffic data you calculate the number of repetitions of a standard axial load, IRC designates this as a n design value. This n design value has to be used in the distress transfer function and compute the allowable strain in the section. So, this is the maximum strain up to which we can go for the current given traffic value. Now, after working with the traffic data, you select the payment cross section here. The payment cross section selection includes the number of layer, what should be the layer thickness and what is the material property we give in here. Now, when you select these factor, you have to make sure that the selected cross section meets the traffic requirement during constructions. So, that the subgrade will not fail in rutting or a sub base or a cement treated layer will not fail in uh, uh, fatigue damage during constructions. So, after selecting this layer, you find out what is critical stresses and strain using an FPAP software and use this critical stresses and strain and check the uh, with the allowable strain value. So, the critical strains to be computed should be less than your allowable strain or in other words, the number of repetitions corresponding to the critical strain computed is the maximum repetitions the payment can withstand before the payment fails. Thank you so much. Thank you.